In this HVACR training video, we're going over the most common type of indoor fan motor on a mini split. That's the five wire BLDC fan motor. We're gonna show you the wire connections, what the inside of the fan motor looks like. We're gonna show you a testing unit that we built here in the shop to teach our students. And we're also gonna do some testing and troubleshooting on an existing running unit. And if you wanna learn about all the different types of electrical components inside of a mini split, their troubleshooting, also the procedures related to the refrigerant, and any common questions that you may have regarding these systems, make sure to check out our Inverter Mini Split Operation and Service Procedures book, which is available at our website at acservicetech.com, over on Amazon, and also at Google Play and Apple Books. Here we have a five wire brushless DC fan motor, and you can tell by it saying DC on the side, it's a 32 watt, it's got five wires, and it connects over to the printed circuit board, so this will be the indoor printed circuit board, but some outdoor units even utilize a five wire instead of a three wire. So you just gotta look at the type of motor that you're working with. In reference to where we would check with our multimeter at, we're typically are gonna have this connection point here accessible in order to take our readings. And what I wanna show you is with this fan motor, it can ramp up and ramp down in its speed and it's actually sending a feedback signal over to the printed circuit board so it knows that it actually is running uh, but what I wanna show you is in the inside of here, you actually have another circuit board. So this is the motor driver board inside, so you would never be working on this on an actual unit. You would just replace the entire fan motor if it was bad, but we're gonna go over the troubleshooting of it here in a little bit. One thing I wanna point out is up here where you have your three connections. At those connection points, you have your three windings. And so these are your windings to the three phase wound brushless DC fan motor. And so we're gonna go ahead and check our resistance values between the, these pairs right here. Once again, this is not something that you can do in the field while you're troubleshooting it. And I'll get into those test points in a little bit and the voltages and what these mean. And to prove that this is a three phase wound brushless DC fan motor, we're gonna first measure our electrical resistance across each pair. You see 16.2, these pairs should all match. And so you got 16.2 there and 16.2 there. And on the inside of a brushless DC fan motor, you also have your permanent magnet. And so you're gonna have multiple north and south poles on this permanent magnet, it's not just one, and it's indicated by these little circles here. And so if I was to put this magnet right here, so you got one, so just say this was the north pole, we're gonna jump across the south. So you got one, two, three, four. And so if I was to reverse this magnet, we're gonna be right in the center. See, one, two, three, four. To learn more about the uh, magnetic forces that are pushing this uh, rotor right here, make sure to check out our book so we go into more in depth there but let's get back to our circuit board and also our testing and operation. Some fan motors don't have the wiring diagram and so you have to look in the manufacturer's literature for that. But in this case it does. So the blue wire, that's your frequency generator, FG, and that is telling the indoor unit PCB how fast this motor's running. Then on your red wire, that's your voltage main. It may also be listed as VDC. So that's the main power supply to this fan motor then on your white wire, that's the voltage common collector. And so that is the power supply for the circuit board on the inside of this fan motor. Then on your yellow wire, that's the VSP, the voltage speed control pin. And depending on the voltage present, will determine what fan speed this should be running at. So that's the communication between the indoor unit PCB and the circuit board on the inside of this fan motor. Then you have your black wire, that's the ground, that's the reference ground for testing and also completes the circuit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move over to an actual unit. We're gonna measure between red and black. So we're looking for our say 350 to 270 volts of direct current. And we're also gonna be measuring with our multimeter between white and black. And we're looking for our 14 to 17 volts here for our direct current and then we're also looking for our yellow to black, which is say zero to 6.5 volts. We're looking for maybe if it's three volts or four volts or five volts, the higher the voltage, the higher the fan speed should be. So if we measure all three of these and the fan motor is not spinning, then we know that the fan is bad. Now that's as long as with the power off to the mini split unit, 
you've tested this fan wheel and it does free spin, it's not jammed up and the bearings aren't seized or anything like that. But if this free spins with the power off and you do measure all three of these voltages and they are, are within spec, then you know that this fan motor is the problem. If you measure the first two, but then you don't have any voltage between your yellow VSP and your black ground, then you know that the indoor printed circuit board is just not even telling the fan to turn on, so it's not the fan's problem. Here at the ceiling cassette unit, we'll pop the shroud down so that we can get into the inside and also take the electrical cover off. You can see we have our covers off and on our remote we are selected on our fan option and our lowest fan speed. In order to test the fan motor on a ceiling cassette unit or another indoor unit, make sure you just turn this on fan mode and then you can turn it down at its lowest setting. And if the fan motor is not running, you're going to want to take your test measurements we're going to be measuring between our G and D, which is our black wire, and our red. We're measuring 341 volts of direct current. You can see that this fan motor is running, but the reason that you would be measuring your voltages in here would be if it's not running. Uh, so this is just being used as an example right now. So we're going to leave our one probe in the G and D, that's the black ground. And then we're going to be measuring our white and black, and we're measuring 15 volts, so that's good. And we're going to measure our speed. And so you see we're measuring 3.09 3 volts, and that's while we're on our low fan speed. And so if you have these three voltage measurements and this fan motor is not turning on, then you know that that fan motor is bad, unless there's some problem where with the power off, the fan blade is hung up or something like that. And you can even see if we're measuring our frequency generator, we're jumping around in our lower 8 volts, so between 8.2 and 8.6 volts, jumping around. Uh, but that's our frequency generator. The manufacturer usually doesn't give you a target for that. Uh, but now I'm going to turn the, the fan speed up a little bit just to give you that reference. But the whole point of that was if you have those three voltage measurements and the fan is not running, the fan is bad. But if you don't have that final measurement on your your yellow wire right here, if you don't have your, your voltage signal right there and the fan is not running, it's not the fan's fault. That's because the PCB is not telling the fan to turn on. So you just need to keep that in mind. Now we'll turn our fan speed up. Our other voltages will remain the same, but between our G and D and our yellow, we're measuring 3.5 volts now, indicating that the indoor PCB is telling the fan motor, the motor driver board, which is a circuit board inside the fan motor, it's telling it to turn the speed up. And so that's why we have a higher voltage there. So anyway, this fan motor is operating correctly. And if we wanted to just check the frequency generation, you can see we're in the upper eights now indicating a higher speed. And so we're at somewhere between 8.7 to 9 volts now, jumping around. So the higher the voltage between the VSP, which is the yellow, and the GND, which is the black, the higher the fan speed should be. Now let's go over to our training unit so we can test this out there. Here we have our training unit, and so this right here is a single phase 120 volt to 300 volt uh, rectifier and converter. And so our supply voltage is going to be 303 volts, and that's going to be supplied on our VDC, that's the red wire, and then we have our uh, black ground wire right there for our reference ground. That completes the circuit, and so then up here, if you can see this, uh, this is our, say, 15 volts, so it's anywhere from between 14 volts and 17 volt power supply for the circuit board on the inside of this fan motor. Here we have a digital tachometer, and so we're going to be shooting a laser right at that reflective tape, so we're going to be able to see our RPM. And here we have our uh, frequency generator wire, and so we're going to be getting our output right here. And this right here is how we're going to be controlling our speed. And so basically the long and short of it is it comes over here and it connects over to this yellow wire that is our VSP and then it uses the GND to complete the circuit remember our voltage that's being supplied to the circuit board is our VCC voltage common collector that is our white and then you have our black wire so that black is just our our black bank right there they're all connected together so uh, here we go we're gonna 
connect our multimeter so you can see our frequency being generated. So right now we have 3.6 volts uh, as our VSP and you can see our rotation so RPM is 1217 We see our RPM climbs to 1,650 RPM at 4.12 volts. At 5.5 volts, we're at 2,600 RPM. And so we're maxed out right there. So really, our voltage is only between 0 and 6 volts. So you see our RPM and also our signal on our... Uh, FG, our feedback generator, you can see it's jumping between say 1 and 2 volts right there. As we have a higher RPM, you see our frequency at a, at a higher voltage. You can also see it on direct current. But once again, the manufacturer usually doesn't give you a reference number to compare this to. So this is just here in order to be able to teach a student how this works. And so we just have our reflective tape, our tachometer, our voltage rectifier and converter, and then just uh, two more. So this one's going down to between 14 and 17 volts. And then this one, now this is an inexpensive one, so it's only going down to 3.5 volts, but you can have a smooth startup if you have a different one that you can start up at about you know 0.5 volts and climb all the way up to 6 volts. Now you don't have to be checking your feedback wire and you could just leave this case down because that's going to be the safest and so you could just have this frequency generator wire in a wire nut. And if you want to learn about the other components in a mini split, their operation and testing such as the the reversing valve, the muffler, the pressure switches, the EEV, the accumulator, the compressor, the crankcase heater, the thermistors, and much, much more. Check out our inverter mini split operation and service procedures book. This book is available over the website at acservicetech.com, over on Amazon, and also on Google Play and Apple Books. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.